Hello, I'm Simon. And I'm Dan. And this is the Wikicast, a podcast where Wikipedia takes us to a random article each week and we talk about what we find. Dan, what are we talking about this week? This week, Simon, we're talking about Freddie Parkus, Frontier Pharmacist. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read you the first sentence and I know you're already going to like this, okay? Okay. Freddie Parkus, Frontier Pharmacist, is a comic Old West adventure computer game created by A.I. Lowe and Josh Mandel um, and published by Sierra Online in 1993. It was dubbed oh the Blazing God. Saddles of Computer Games by Computer Gaming World. Oh my God. How cool is that? I have to admit, I thought that it was going to be a person. I thought this was oh, going right. to be like uh, the guy, Hugh Glass from The Revenant meets yeah. the medic from Team Fortress 2. Oh, God. Uh, but Match this sounds... So, so it's a it's a vintage video game yeah. from 1993. So this is like XCOM, the original XCOM Era. territory. Yeah. So it's for the MS-DOS, Macintosh and Windows 3.1. Oh, would this come under... Uh, oh, are we allowed to talk about what you've been up to for the past week? I think so. I think we probably can now. Okay, so does this game come under your uh, jurisdiction as an it, official Apple genius? It does. It does. It does come under my my jurisdiction as an Apple employee. I am technically a tech specialist, um, but I, I will be. There working, can't be enough quotation marks around. <laughs> I will be working, that. working at the Genius Bar, um, and then hopefully, depending on how long I'm with Apple, I'll be able to work my way up to uh, to genius to genius level. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. I. It's everything. It's everything I hoped it wasn't more. Um, so we are going to get around to talking about this game because, how, honestly, from that synopsis, how can we not? Yeah. We should apologise. Uh, there's been yet another barren week in the podcast. We had to. Do, we we skipped last week, and that's because our lives have been all over the place. Frankly. Yeah, oh, it's been crazy. Uh, Dan started a, a job, and it's been freshers' week, so you've been running off your feet. Because how many societies are you representing uh, at the freshers' fair? Oh, uh, you know, quite a few. Quite, quite it's, a lot. It's, it's at least three off the top of my it head. It is at least three, but it's all doable. I've, I've, I've written it all down. It works out on paper. I might just be dead by Christmas, but other than that, it's, it it's should be. It's fun. a price worth paying. Yeah, I think. it's actually, to be fair, the amount of the, 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 what takes up the vast majority of my time at the moment is Apple because of the training. Um, mm. I'm basically, I need, I'm needed in store all the time for training. So, when I get a full rotor and I start doing proper kind of scheduled shifts which i'll know about three weeks in advance because they're terribly organized it should be fine i also had the most exciting day on friday um this friday just gone because it was the launch day the release day of the iphone 8 mm, you were you were at ground zero for it this thing it was amazing um we were i was there and i was i was running and bringing you know bringing things down when people were coming in and and it was really exciting because the employees we you know we we hadn't seen we hadn't seen the phone. So as, as soon as people wanted to see them, we were like, right, let's go and get them. We'd bring them down and we'd literally be like, congratulations on this phone. And they were deadly serious. Like, have you seen it? We're like, no, we haven't seen it. It looks really cool. I love um, that. That's the Apple philosophy. It's like, congratulations on buying one of our products. Yeah, it's you really, are one of the blessed, the blessed few. I love it. Many, and the, and the, the, people there, the people there are so, so nice. And I think there's something to be said that while the, while the application process took a while, um, it, it you know it, it chugged along quite a bit it's a long process for a reason they really really want a specific kind of person which is why i think I, you know i get along with everyone because we are all so similar we've got a similar mm. personality type very similar sense of humor um it's just it's lovely it's really good so your life's been all over the place and uh this is the first podcast that we have done truly remotely because i we are not in the same house anymore mm. i i have moved out to our friend michael's front room <laughs> Uh, which is, it's actually bigger than my old room was. It's, I've actually got more space than I did before. It's an incredibly uh, chivalrous move from Simon because it was reaching a point where um, I think both you and I were struggling to stay in the house. Yeah. Ed, as much as, as much as I love him dearly, and he's a dear, dear best friend of mine, but my I like God, how you're padding this. Oh, he just, it was unbelievable. I couldn't, they just, I just couldn't. And I told you, I think I mentioned on the, on the Friday that, now which day was it that you moved out? Thursday. Thursday. On the Thursday that you moved out in the space of half an hour, I had tidied 
the kitchen and the living room and I'd moved all of his stuff that was just taking... You basically, if you walked into our living room, you couldn't sit on any piece of furniture. And that's no exaggeration. You literally couldn't. I remember on the, uh, while you were moving out, I was sitting cross-legged on the floor eating pasta because I couldn't sit down. Yeah. And I came in and then Ed just just tickling my nerves ever so slightly as he walked into the room and it took him 10 minutes to notice that all his stuff was gone. For those uh, for those new readers of the podcast, you might be new to this episode. Uh, we've been living with three people in the house, really designed for two to push. Yeah, and the person who has taken over my room now is the human version of an orc. Yeah, uh, oh. in terms of cleanliness, it, the front room looked like Kirith Ungol. It was it, just, it was, it was unbelievable, it was pretty bad. Uh, and I did notice actually because I had to, I, n- I nip back to pick up a few extra things that I, I forgot. Uh, and his room looks exactly like the front room used to. It's mm. not, it's, you know, it, nothing has changed whatsoever. No. I mean, uh, at least now when things get messy or I just spot a random piece of clothing that for some reason is draped over, God, I don't know. The or in the sofa. bathroom. I was trying to drill into him this concept that when we take our clothes off, we, we bring them with us. Mm. Like we don't just leave them where they fall. Or you don't just gradually remove items of clothing on your way to the bathroom, on the way up the stairs. It's, it's not like it's not like a romantic film where you're seducing somebody and there's, oh, look, the skirt's there and the top's there mm. and the pants and the bra's there. Ed, it's like that, but he's just undressing himself yeah, he on lives, the way. He leaves his skirt and, and bra just anywhere he likes. And it's just so frustrating. <laughs> But, uh, but speaking of which, I'm now living with my friend Michael, well, our friend Michael. Oh, my um, friend Michael. Oh, and- friend. <laughs> friend. <laughs> which is an undisclosed location that's very inconspicuous mm. in, in the centre of Exeter. Um, Michael lives in the organ uh, loft of Exeter Cathedral. Yeah. It's, uh, he's actually the Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. <laughs> he, lives, uh, he lives underneath in the, in the catacombs, underneath the cathedral. Um, does Exeter Cathedral have catacombs? I know there are catacombs in Exeter. I don't, but- I don't think the cathedral does, no. Because there, there was the Roman bars, as we hear every week, mm. that are out the front. Yeah, but I don't think there's, I don't think there's catacombs underneath. No, so there's a lot. Not. Whereas, example, but Bath Abbey, for example, does, mm. and a lot of cathedrals in the area do. Mm. We've already dissolved. In, how long has that been? Time. What, yeah. how, how long has it been until we started talking about cathedrals? Anyway, so basically, yeah, I, I have moved into the centre of town. It's quite close to the cathedral, uh, which was actually to the extent I had to do some recording yesterday, and um, I couldn't because the bell ringers were doing practice for about three hours. Yeah. And I was just sat there like, well, okay, I, I guess I'm not doing this now then. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm basically set up here with, I'm on a sofa bed and I've got my, I've got a desk with my, my computer on and uh, my clothes are, I'm living out of bags, basically, for the next six weeks or so until I finish my PhD. Uh, I, am, I am living out of bags. So, you know, it's, it's, it's better than it was, basically. It was, it was untenable yeah. in the house. Uh, that, that is the situation. That is where you you join us, readers. That's where we are. And we are talking about right. So what was it? Front frontiersman, action medic. Freddie Freddie Parkus, frontier pharmacist. So Freddie Parkus is the protagonist of this game. I yes. You're the is one it, with the article. <laughs> yeah, I'm just scrolling down. I didn't want to give it too much of a read. In, <laughs> in the game, in in the game, the player takes the role of Freddie Parkus, an 188 1880s era pharmacist in the town of Coarse Gold, California, which was the location of Sierra's headquarters in 1993. Ah, I see. And now Sierra did a whole bunch of cool games. They did Pharaoh and Caesar, I mm. think. If any, if any, because I'm a bit of a fan of retro games. Um, I, well, because I was young when they came out. So I, I just, or games as they were known when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I think they did some of my favourites, Sierra, mm. actually. Is it based on a real person? Uh, I'm just having a read. So, no, no, it's not. Okay, so it's an it's an a, a, apocryphal. Is that the right word? It's just it's just somebody so. they've invented to yeah. be like the. It's a Nathan Drake. Uh, the game uses Sierra's uh, C S C I one point one engine and features a two hundred and fifty six color hand drawn art, scaling sprites, and a point and click. Two hundred and fifty six colors. Yeah, it's pretty great. Luxury. Uh, it was released on both floppy disk and CD-ROM. Oh my god! Um, and the uh, the latter having full voiceover speech for all characters. The game's manual is entitled "The Modern Day Book of Health and Hygiene," a parody of nineteenth-century medical texts. 
Oh, so quite a lot of thoughts know, gone into this. This this reminds me of an idea that we had. Do you remember that idea we had about um, alien in, an alien invasion taking place in a medieval kingdom? Oh yeah. Oh, see, now I was thinking about the other idea that we had. Oh god, we haven't had many. The spa- um, it was the it was like you know the we, there was that game that was it was basically like a tavern builder, but we said rather than do a tavern, to set it as a like a cantina or a, like a space oh, bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, remember? like Canteen Tycoon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, But yeah. we're doing it, set it in space, and oh, that was that had legs. That had such good, it, glorious there are, legs. There are lots of game ideas that I'd love to pursue. I mean, mm. so, so the, the, um, uh, the medieval thing was, I think, going to be more of a novel, but this was this idea we had that, like, what if aliens, yeah, aliens land and imagine it's sort of a Game of Thrones level of sophistication. So there are knights charging at these, like, two aliens with ray guns, but also when they get one, they're dissecting it. It's like, or it's humour is about a balance balance my lord yeah. <laughs> there's no blood in its veins only bile because <laughs> it's of course to take place in the west country yeah of course um, why not why not but like I, I like this idea of medieval that actually that in itself has got legs like so, okay right so but but it's 1800s so this is it's not modern medicine but it's not um uh super rudimentary it, it, yeah it's not it's not the four humors basically hmm so in the game, uh, in the act, in this actual game, not the, not the one we're theorising, um, Freddy must take part in numerous tasks such as mixing the right amount of chemicals to create the requested prescription remedy and lab equipment. He must he also must deal with various dilemmas taking part in town, such as a gas leak, um, aka all the town's horses uh, with explosive flatulence, a snail <laughs> stampede, a diarrhea epidemic. And an abandoned building fire that might spread through the entire town. He must use found objects and pharmaceutical skills to solve these problems. You know, I j- I've just uh, googled this. You can, we can still buy this. Oh my god, can we? We could do a playthrough. Let's do a playthrough of Freddie Parker's Frontier Pharmacist. Now, bear in mind uh, this: uh, the version I have on Good Old Games or, or GOG. Yeah. Um, it, it will work on Windows. But not necessarily. We could do this. Oh, there must oh, be. Oh my a, goodness. There must. Be, I mean, it was originally released on Macintosh, so. Oh well, it might then. There might be a version. Well, this is where we come to the practicalities of us moving out. Because, well, me moving out because I would love to do this, but we'd have to do it sat next to each other, Game Grump style. I think mm. this does. Looking at some screenshots, this does have um, aspects of the terrible Link games that they play. Yeah. Well, as we've as we've already established, we do now have use of the sofa and chair now. Now that I've moved all of Ed's things, the chair. Yeah. <laughs> what luxury! We now have the chair back. But yeah, we could. We could. Oh, uh, if you'd like us to play this on Sponge and Electric after I finish my PhD, because uh, well, to be fair, this also depends on you having time. Because now it's not just me that's crazy, crazy busy. Mm. We're both crazy, crazy busy. And yeah. in fact, keeping this podcast going is going to be interesting. But we, if if you are desperate, perhaps Google Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist, mm. or click on the link provided in the description. Yep. Yes. Very good point. Um. It, yeah perhaps uh yeah have a look have a look at it and if you think we should play it send us an email because mm. i'd be up for that i think that could be quite fun oh, I, we, sounds... we've not done a proper playthrough on sponge and electric because we started the kerbal space program and there are more episodes yet to come out but i haven't had a chance to edit it because i've just been so busy mm. but um good. this could be this could be our that that series it, you know it could be like sips and shin playing um minecraft together oh, it could be or, something or skyrim for sips that's probably the, the closer one yeah uh, we watch a lot of gaming youtube by the way in fact in fact if the old adage like um you are what you eat applies to you know you make what you watch mm. i should make gaming videos on youtube yeah. but oh maybe it may be this okay right so sorry i've i borrowed in is there anything more to discuss about this game um not necessarily this game i'm just going through and having a look at other games they'd made so they did the King's Quest series. King's Quest. Um, I don't remember that. They did the Black Cauldron. They first released their first game in the High Res Adventure series, which is so ironic. <laughs> um, was Mystery House in eighteen in nineteen in eighteen eighty in nineteen eighty. <laughs> in eighteen, that was actually the inspiration for the uh, pharmacist game. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, though, because, um, you know, Nintendo started as a card company. So the Nintendo Corporation was founded before the Ottoman Empire collapsed. That's insane. Like, I don't think Sierra's quite that old, but it's, uh, yeah, there were certainly early players. Mm. 
Like that was the that was the kind of era, I suppose, when like the slightest innovation was was groundbreaking. Mm. Like you know, going to two hundred fifty six colors, having was it full voice acting for all the people in the game? Like unbelievable game of the year. Like imagine if people imagine if we made a game now and we were like to- touting that as a thing. Like two fi- two five six colors, full voice acting, interactive menus. I've just available on floppy disk. I've just gone through and I'm looking at their their later works. On November 24th, 1997, the year of my birth, uh, Sierra published Diablo Hellfire, the official, um, the first official expansion pack for Diablo, Blizzard's Diablo. Oh! So does that mean Sierra was bought by Blizzard? It was developed by Synergistic Software, a division of Sierra. On November 19th, 1998, Sierra published Half-Life for the PC, developed by Valve. So... Oh, this is blowing my mind. Yeah. So Sierra are behind because I I knew them as yeah being like Pharaoh and stuff like that as um they were like city sims, but they they did Half Life. I I just assumed that was Valve doing it internally. Sorry for those of you who aren't into video games. I apologize for this episode already. But <laughs> so, uh, C U C International, Cuck International, uh, Comp U Card International, uh, in February nineteen ninety six, early e commerce. Pu- e-commerce pioneer cuc international seeking to expand into interactive entertainment offered to buy sierra at a price of approximately 1.5 billion bearing in mind that's 1996 good grief yeah the deal with cuc closed on july 24th 1996 immediately after the sale ken williams stepped down as ceo Uh, presumably riding off into the sunset with a giant bag of cash yeah heck of a lot he stayed with the Good software God. division as vice president of CUC so that he could provide strategic guidance to Sierra and began to work on CUC's online product distributor, NetMarket. So they've done so, they've done a hell of a lot of stuff. So, so they kind of, they melted into other companies, basically. These really talented game designers just sort of, you know, they just, what, like vanished into the ether of yeah. big places like Blizzard, I guess. They worked with Relic Entertainment too. Ah, oh, Relic, they made Dawn of War. Yeah. Ah, oh, Relic made some great games. So, um, Homeworld, which was developed by Relic, yeah, yeah. Um, Sierra was the publisher. Wow, they were active so much later then than I thought. I thought they were done by, like, the year 2000. So what have they done recently, I wonder? Well, I was, I was wondering, um, to, to sort of move this back onto the stars of the show, which is, of course, us. Mm-hmm. Um, I was wondering, what, what's the first game you remember playing? Simpsons Hit and Run on the oh. on uh, actually that might not have been the first one I think the first one may have been like Roller Coaster Tycoon yeah I had that yeah I um, had but that. I remember fun. having Simpsons Hit and Run on the Windows XP oh wow that makes me feel old it was so cool that's the best my first computer well I said the, we had a family computer that we bought in like in like 1997 actually funnily enough um, oh. which had Windows 95 oh god and uh, it had a pack of games with it including FIFA 97, PGA Tour 96, the original Command and Conquer, yeah, um, Magic Carpet 2, and I, uh, I can't remember. Okay. That was the fifth one. Uh, oh, that's going to annoy me so much. See, I remember after when I when I would I would have been in year, crikey, what would it be year year six I think. Year five or year six, and my right. a, f- a friend in in my class uh, introduced me to World of Warcraft. And then it- <laughs> this was vanilla, okay. and then and then and the rest was literally history. But I remember him introducing it to me, and I got it for Christmas. The van- this was vanilla World of Warcraft before any of the expansions, um, the, and it was oh, it was amazing, and I still have such fond memories. But trying to run that game on the just i it's not to call it a pc it is a lie it was awful <laughs> i remember there were times when uh, the first before i rolled horde uh either baddies oh well it depends on your perspective also but, you need to explain what rolled means all uh, right so before um in in world of warcraft you get to choose obviously you, get, you can play as many different characters but the kind of overarching um antagonists throughout the piece are you have the horde and the alliance you've basically got the good guys and the humans and the elves and the dwarves and all those ones against like orcs and the undead and trolls and you know so like classic fantasy kind of setup right so when i first started playing i rolled alliance i was a good guy 
the problem was I decided to uh, play as a, I think I was a gnome, which was quite fitting for me because they are the smallest oh. smallest race oh. in the game. Hang on, sorry, my virginity is growing back. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Carry, carry on. Hey, I loved it. I thought they were. It was really good. Um, yeah, and but I decided all my friends had had um, had made characters as humans, <laughs> so I had to for literally about two hours real time, because this is before when you could if you you couldn't just fly anywhere you wanted using flight paths. You had to actually walk there yourself because it's a hardcore original oh, game. No, yeah. So I remember running across literally snowtop mountains trying to find these little glitches in the game where I could get over these things to get to the main uh, city for the humans, which is called Stormwind. Oh, this is so nerdy and I love it. Um, <laughs> anyway, I got to Stormwind and, and I was out standing outside the gates and I'd never, you know, it's, this is huge. This is the main alliance capital in the game. It was massive and like it was going to be heaving with people and I was so excited. Anyway... I literally, as soon as my character had crossed the threshold into the gates to go into the outer, the, the kind of outer ring of the city, if you like, game crashed. <laughs> the computer could not handle that much information. And that I remember logging in and I would be, I'd get about three seconds of being able to be in the game where I could see, I was playing, probably playing at like 10 frames a second and then I'd be disconnected Oof. from the server. So for, for about two hours, I then had to slowly turn my character around, periodically log- logging out and back in and out and back in <laughs> to just get out of the city because I couldn't play. Oh, wow. And then, and is... then the family bought the, for, we, we bought an iMac. And since then, my, that started my love so affair with Apple. Does this, does this explain your love affair with Apple? It allowed you to play Warcraft. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> that is amazing. And I had it ever since, and we've I've been I've been Apple ever since. Yeah, and now you have a job there because of Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I see. I thought you were going to be like because the computer crashed because of Stormwind. You were like, that's it. I'm Horde. I'm yeah. evil now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the slight against my family the, name. The first time I I made a Horde character was actually when I'd. It was like the first week that I just moved. We, the family had just moved to Australia. So there was such a big change in my life. I was like, right, I've got to, it's, it's all or nothing now. I've got to turn. I want some normality. I'm going to be a gnome called Bish Bosh. Yeah. Much I'm- like <laughs> I turned to the other side of kind of the moral compass in game, I turned to the other side of the world <laughs> to move to Australia. So it's just kind of a nice, it's like poetry. It rhymes. I just remembered the, um, the other game uh, that it came with was Theme Hospital. Have you ever played that? Uh, I didn't play it. Um, that was, I, I think I decided as a kid that it was counterfeit. Mm. Um because I couldn't save. And so what's the logical thing that you would do in in that situation? In a game where you can't save. Yeah, what would you what would you do if you find out that the game that the, because it was a disc back then, it wasn't a download, it was a physical disc. What would you do if you found out that you can't save in a game? I'd never turn it off. <laughs> I smashed it with a hammer. Ah. That sounds like I you. Took, I I took the disc outside and I just smashed it with a hammer. Yeah. And it was a good game, and I would I really enjoyed the first couple of levels every time I played it. So I'm not quite sure. I might actually have to download it so I can finally find out what the end of the game's like. We should so try and play The Simpsons Hit and Run. Yeah, because I had friends that had it. Oh, and I, I loved good game. watching it. Such a good game. I loved there it. There was a good run of um, Simpsons games, actually, because there was that. I had a Simpsons wrestling game for the PS1. Right. Um, and there was there was another great Simpsons game, wasn't there? I know Hit and Run was like the big one. Hmm. But ah, maybe maybe it was just that I thought that because as a franchise it just enveloped everything, mm. like it 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 was just all all consuming. <laughs> but then but then again, see that that wasn't the first stuff I played though because that was the stuff at the PC. But my my next door neighbor had a PS One, and right. I remember playing a, the Mission Impossible game on ps1 and like demos i think i think there was this was a thing you could do where you, you'd get a disc and there'd be demos for like five games on it yeah, and yeah it was yeah. like disney's hercules and um there was a game that was like pirates mm. um and i remember yeah playing these really basic they were really quite crap yeah. games but like as a kid it's like oh my god yeah <laughs> like, i did actually remember um i i, I also had four no what it wasn't the playstation one version but it was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Oh my god, with the terrible graphics. Oh god, just like what? Oh god, and it was if crap. And the voice down. acting wasn't, you know, like it was not even close. Not even close. The story basically didn't exist. Um, 
And it was just like, I, I remember, can you remember you came downstairs once and it was about seven o'clock in the morning and, I, and you were like, you're right. And I'm like, yeah, I've been up since five watching a playthrough. <laughs> and like, <laughs> I just found it and I was like, it took me back to this weird, weird place of like, oh God, it was very strange. If, if dear reader, you are ever feeling down, I highly, highly recommend that you just look at screenshots from this game. Because, for example, the character model of Hagrid oh. is... It's like an egg. Yeah. It's like someone's just put a face texture on an egg. Also, the voice of Hagrid is just ridiculous. And when we and uh, I remember specifically the 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 model for Flitwick <laughs> just looks like something's gone wrong. Something's gone horribly. He's like a genetic experiment gone wrong. It's just <laughs> just shocking. It, it's funny you should say that. We should talk about this today because I today watched a really interesting video from the British Museum about mm. the Lewis Chessmen. Because do you remember in the Wizard Chess scene, um, the set that's used is um, the Lewis Chessmen. So for those of you that might not know, these are um, ivory chess pieces, well, they're carved from walrus tusk, I think, that were found on the island of Lewis in Scotland. Um, and they're these Viking, you'll, you'd recognise them if you see them, it's the, it's the set that's used in the movie. And um, the set that they used was from the curator at the British Museum. But I watched this video about this today and um, how they actually used white and red in the movie because that was the colours that the Norse, the original Viking set, were dyed. Yeah. Um, even though there's no dye left anymore. But in that video, there was a recreation of the wizard chess scene from Harry Potter. And mm. Have you seen anything from the um, British Museum? Um, I've seen videos from them, but I haven't seen... So there's a, there's a curator, the, the guy who's in the set called Irving... Not Kirshner. He directed The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, Irving, Irving Fisher or something like that. Mm. Um, and he looks like Santa, basically. And in he just in the background of this video, you just see him as Flitwick, mm. which, where he's like levitating the baubles up onto the tree. Irving Finkel. Irving Finkel, that's it. Uh, fin- Finkel. Is that, is that the name of the lady who turns out to be a guy from the first Ace Ventura film? Finkel. Or is, no, that that's yeah. Sorry, this no is idea. a really weird tangent. Uh, Ace Ventura is it Call of Nature? The first? No, Pet Detective is the first one. Yeah, Ace Ventura, uh, Pet Detective, yeah, and then Call Call to Nature. Yeah, yeah, Finkel. I was right. <laughs> Bizarre. Fa- uh, a, a Dolphins player called Ray Finkel. I don't know why my um, I, t- I don't know why my brain went there. But yeah, basically they had this guy. Um, Pretend, pretend to be Flitwick and it's just hilarious because he's this esteemed professor and I'm pretty sure he is just like on his knees in the background with his like you know the classic put your shoes on your knees mm. to look like, look like a midget type move um, and yeah like pretending to levitate a bauble up um, which was yeah um, how did we get how did we get to talking about this again oh you were talking about PS1 yeah that awful, uh, Harry Potter. awful game and our, and our first forays into gaming. Mm. Um, I was actually just playing. So I was I was before we did this. I was playing uh, Warhammer Vermintide, oh, wow. which is basically Left for Dead but set in Warhammer. No, so fair. instead of zombies, it's Skaven. Nah. Uh, it was pretty fun. Actually. I was also just getting flashbacks to when we got a PlayStation One. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. What a game! What a game! I think that I think they're doing a reboot. I think you're right, actually. I know they've, re- they've, they've done a re- they've done a they've gone they've done like a a reinterpretation of the banjo and kazooie. Games. Oh, that might be what I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah, which is cool, and it's it's stars like a gecko. There was another one. Was it Ratchet and Clank? Was the other like PS? Oh yeah, a PlayStation. Yeah, huge. Like, and of course, like Spyro Dragon. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because for me, I had a I had a PS One, but I didn't really get into it. The console that I really really got into was the GameCube. Yeah, I never had a GameCube. That was my favourite gaming console ever because it's a weird controller, but growing up with it, it's so well designed. Mm. It's incredible. And I spent, I don't even want to know how many hundreds of hours playing Time Splitters. Mm. It was the thing It was the thing that, um, did you do this? Did you have like um, sleepovers with friends and you would I didn't have any friends. stay up all night? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. sorry. But you keep rubbing it in, it's fine. Okay. Um, but I had lots of no, I didn't have <laughs> lots of friends. I had a few, um, and we yeah, we used to basically just did sleepovers, which my dad would call wakeovers because we just stay awake all night and play yeah. time splitters, and we do like li- the, we'd set the time on a game to be an hour. Yeah. And we'd be like, should we do an hour where the only thing we have is timed minds? 
yeah, all right. And then you're just running around chucking mines on each other. And like, if you got one on you, you know you're going to die in like 15 seconds, so you'd run to the nearest player. Mm. Uh, or yeah, they'll be like, eh, let's do an hour with non-homing rocket launchers. Like, I love it. Yeah. And then just just do that. Oh, I love that. I, I wish that sleepovers stayed a thing into mm. into our age. Um, I mean, basically, on a, if it was like a Friday night and we knew that we weren't doing anything the next day that was too strenuous, that's basically what we did. We'd find some guff on YouTube, set up camp with whiskey <laughs> and that, and then just... Oh, man, that's great. Like, watch loads of Game Grumps. Yeah. Or, uh, or as, as for, for me, recently, it's been Soviet Womble. Throw back to that time when... I watched, the, watched entire ga- the entire Games Grump series of Dark Souls 3 in the space of about two days. You came down and you were like, have you gone Have you gone to bed? And I was like, no. <laughs> I've been st- you hadn't moved. Yeah, you literally I'd, hadn't moved. I'd stayed uh, on the sofa on, for gonna, two days and it was amazing. I'm just going to look at how many episodes. There are 93 episodes and they're each about 15 minutes long. Yeah. The best of compilation is over an hour long. Go on then, Mr. Maths. How long is that in total? I'm not going to work that out. I'm not... A- Fucking human calculator. You're doing a PhD. Come on. I do English. It can't be me. Times, let's assume that it's a 15 minute duration on average. It's 1,395 minutes. Right. Uh, which uh, equates to t- about 24 hours. Yeah. It's, just a, it's 23 and a bit hours. That sounds about right. Just 24 hours of non stop YouTube. It was incredible. It's like uh, what I'd do is I'd want to watch all the um, trials. Mm. the hat films trials episodes because it's like 150 of oh, those. yeah yeah see so if you could do them all in one set it's called a trialathon if mm. you do it because i think people used to do that when they were in the middle of the series and they had like 30 shouldn't it, it should be called like a trials athlon or something trials athlon i was literally thinking yeah, the same yeah. thing <laughs> nice nice but yeah like we should definitely maybe that's a live stream you could do yeah almost like the Yogscast do christmas live streams like we could do a sleepover live stream and we're in our gym jams yeah matching gym jams matching gym jams and we're drinking mm. and we're playing video games <sighs> and sounds and dreamy various, like it's, get stay tuned for the highlight at 3 3 a.m where they get dominoes yeah, yeah. simon eats two large pizzas by himself <laughs> and dan cries <laughs> He's like, just stop! Just stop it! He's, full. He's had it up! And I'm just like, no! It is mine! It's Palpatine, apparently. <laughs> That's the thing. Since I've stopped counting my calories, just because I'm too stressed with the PhD to worry about it, my appetite, like my prodigious ability to pack ungodly amounts of food mm. into my body has really returned. And it's not it's not good. No. Like, I made, I made enough fajitas for four people yesterday and I, I had to stop myself from eating it all in one sitting because I easily could have. I have in with with working uh, the past week in kind of the centre of town. Um, I very l- luckily I get quite a nice chunk of time for my break, um, and I've been you know there's been a couple of days where I've brought a packed lunch and I've made you know, made sandwiches and some crisps and and I, which has been hilarious in itself because it it kind of takes you back to when you were doing um, packed lunches for school or if you put you're packing some yeah. packing stuff for a trip and I'm kind of I'm sitting there with my like piece of Tupperware and I've done my sandwich and I've got my piece of fruit and I've got my crisps and then I'll like be walking past the cupboard and I'll see like a caramel wafer and I'll pop that in and be like oh that's going to be a treat later I'll forget about that one and then I'm just you know like <laughs> like I'm doing it for kids being like oh he's going to really love that except he is me like Oh, no, because my parents took it home. I was going to say, I do actually still have a Thomas the Tank Engine lunchbox, Ugh. which I got when I was 21. Yeah. And I could have given you that to you to have your lunch. It's so great. But yeah, um, if I'm not doing that, I was, you know, I'd be, I'd be with some of my fellow employees um, and we'd think of somewhere to think of somewhere to go. And I've totally fallen in love with and have never realised the real glory of the Tesco meal deal. Oh, you had a good... Yeah, you were talking about this last oh, week. Oh, this yes. has changed my life. The amount of stuff you can get for £3 is incredible. Like, is this like that time we went to Iceland? <laughs> is uh, this the new Iceland moment? I mean, I don't want to... I feel like I've got, I'm have got. i getting a bit of a stereotype for, for being a bit middle class. <laughs> but I genuinely, I genuinely said to Simon, he was like, I'm just going to pop into Iceland. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't think I've been to Iceland before. And then we walked in and our five seconds passes and I take a very, very sharp intake of breath and go, oh, so this is why it's called Iceland. Like it genu- <laughs> I genuinely had no idea. I didn't realise everything. This is, you know, it's freezers. It's like one of those, it's the Jaws shot moment. Yeah. The camera of Dolly, Dolly Zoom. Zoom's back. Yeah, yeah. We have been talking for quite a while and I think it's about time that we took our very tired bears' yeah. asses, our tired bear asses. <laughs> 
as in as in the animal when i was a kid my dad would call me a tired bear if i was i don't mean like we are tired and we have bear asses yeah i mean we are tired bears and we're going to take our asses to correspondence corner okay uh, it is it's it's quite late and we, we should probably crack on with reading some of your excellent correspondence mm. so our first email is from matthew b chasey as we haven't got a subject but that's all right we'll launch related, straight in. is he related to johnny b good very good very good <laughs> is it though uh, he says he says dear pinky and the brain i'll let you determine who is who now the brain was the smaller one yeah and pinky was tall and thin however how did the theme tune go pinky and the brain pinky and the brain was that one that was it wasn't it Oh, I thought it was like Pinky and the Brain. I don't think it, I don't think it was that. No, wasn't it like <laughs> I, think I just made that up. One is a genius, the other's insane. The laboratory mice. That, that yeah. Is, the Pinky, your Pinky and the brain, 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 brain. Well, you are the genius. So apparently, I'm in, and I am insane. True. Try even thinking I could do a PhD. So <laughs> sorry, yeah. I, I, I digress. What does he say? I'm writing to you in order to delay and avoid the incomprehensible amount of work that's ahead of me as I begin my thesis. Oh, Godspeed, you poor Matthew. boy. You poor boy. Um, I am currently a senior studying astrophysics, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do after I graduate. Me too. On that point, I have a question for Simon. At what point in your academic de- career did you decide the pers- the pursuance of a PhD would be in order? Uh, it was in my third year summer. I did a research project um, between third and fourth year where I wanted. To, I, I was thinking about doing it because I found in third year I really liked uh, GFD, which is a geophysical fluid dynamics, and I thought I'd try it. And then I did that research and thought, oh, this is this is quite nice. I like this, and I regretted it ever since no i haven't regretted it ever since i've just decided i don't want to stay in academia he's got an, i'm glad i did a he's got an equally as uh, deep and important question for me a question for dan what made you decide to begin a degree in english at the age of 16 that's quite that, that that's still quite a deep meaningful conversation i mean is it i think it's riddled with with uh sarcasm and casual <laughs> abuse um, and finally, a question for you both. If you were each a sandwich, what well, kind of sandwich would you... answer the question. Oh, oh, I don't know. I've always been good at English and it's been my f- favourite thing and that's why I did it. It's quite a boring answer, really. Um, <laughs> and finally, a question for you both. If you were each a sandwich, which type of sandwich would you be? And what type of sandwich do you think the other would be? Thank you very much for the quality content. I look forward to this podcast every week and your continued digressions, intentional or otherwise, make for an interesting and engaging listen. Matthew B. Maguire. P.S. Sorry for the age joke. There we go. If it makes a difference, you're not alone. Oh. I'm 20, 21 years old and I'm constantly... Con- gosh, I think I might be having a stroke. I'm 21 years old and I'm constantly mistaken for a teenager. P.P.S. I believe the debate between cat- dogs and cats is a difficult debate to fight. Dogs and cats are both different and wonderful in their own ways and I don't think it's fair to pick between the two. That being said, cats are made of hatred and pity. <laughs> nice. Now, Brilliant it's, it's stuff, funny Matthew. actually, So, relating to deep and meaningful conversations and the dogs and cats debates, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I've been, uh, I ran a poll on my Twitter mm-hmm. yesterday. Uh, I asked the people who would win one Dan-sized cat or 100 cat-sized Dans. Oh, God. I don't, no, I don't think I did see this. Now, do you, do you want to guess what the final result was? Okay, so it was, it was a, a cat-sized me. No, a- one Dan-sized cat. So a fucking huge cat. Well, a moderately-sized cat. Mm. Or a hundred cat-sized ewes. I'll be a hundred cat-sized me's. Oh, it was sixty-seven percent of the vote. You are correct. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Almost it, it, literally two thirds. It's very impressive. Uh, Three hundred seventy-six people voted, so it's pretty statistically significant as oh, well. Nice. And also, for the love of God, somebody please draw this. I want a drawing of this. I want a uh, hundred cat-sized Dan's mauling <laughs> a like a panther-sized cat. Speaking of drawing things. No, no, no. We still haven't answered this question. Sandwiches. Oh, what right. sandwich oh, would right. you be? Yeah, Dan? yeah. Um, gosh, what sandwich would I'm, I be? I'd be a uh, cheddar with no mayo, just bread on brown bread. Because that's basically the only sandwich that I'll eat from a supermarket. And it's very boring and middle of the road. And I'm about as boring and white as it is possible to be. See, my favourite sandwich is either, either chicken and tomato or cheese and cucumber. It's so good. Cheese, do you not like cucumber? No, I, 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 I something about the taste I really don't like. Okay, it's cucumber. I know it's full of water, vitamins, vitamins, kind of minerals, thing. very high number. Oh, don't get me started. 
<laughs> but those are your favourites. What would you be if you were a sandwich? I probably would have avocado in it, wouldn't I? Yeah, you would. I'd be an avocado, avocado, hummus. Ado, ha, avocado hummus and gold leaf <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> I think that would be me. What? Tobacco? Gold leaf tobacco? No, just gold leaf, as in what they use in desserts. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, wow. You're really, really selling yourself there. Yeah. What would you're, you you're be? You're the luxury end. You, you, you're you not going to be in the £3 meal deal. You'd be, brown bread, you'd be brown bread, marmite and cheese, but not sliced cheese, just fucking hunks of cheese. <laughs> Confirmed. If I was a sandwich, I'd be a hunk. Thank you very much, Daniel. Oh, Let's move on sake. to the next email, shall we? Uh, the next email is from... John Snow! Jack Turner, who has said, Hi, Dognul and Catman. Ah, clever. Witty. I like it. It's, it's like Dogtanian and Dart. D'Artan Cat. I don't know. I don't know enough about the Three Musketeers. Uh, just a quick email to express my views. I would love for either of you to recite the entirety of Frozen. Four! Exclamation marks. Nice, nice. Uh, whether individually or together, I genuinely think it'd be hilarious. I think we have uh, perhaps a Christmas special mm. on our hands. That is us. And we have to do the songs. And we if also there's a have solo, to be drunk. the person has to do the accompaniment. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Completely. I'll, try, I'll play along with the guitar, which means I'll just butcher it because. I just, you know. Oh yeah, because I'm going to be a fantastic Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> we'll play together, and, also, and you can learn. You can do something on the saxophone. You know, you say that I've been practicing quite a bit recently because I've been staying late in the office. I have the sax with me, so when everyone leaves at like seven, I just do like twenty minutes of practice before I do a bit more work. Nice, but quite good. Yeah. I'm getting rather good for me, say so no, myself. Good for and you. No, listeners, you're not going to hear it. Oh, look at me, I'm Simon, and I'm good at the saxophone. What's our next email? Uh, we've got one here from Martin Cockerell, which gets me incredibly excited. Uh, I no, that down, sounds bro, wrong. I can see that your microphone has just like started moving up. <laughs> <laughs> Strap that thing down. Uh, so the subs, the, the subject is titled World of Warcraft. Uh, dear Messrs. Dan and, and it's Simon, from and Daisy Ridley, and he's got the right order there as well. Good man, Martin. Um, first time, first time listener, first time emailer. A question for Dan following on the last podcast. How long did you play World of Warcraft 4 and what was the best expansion in your opinion? I played right, on and off. I'm just going to put my headset down. I'm going I'm to go make a snack. Okay, okay right. Settle in for the long haul, game. guys. Here we go. I played on and off for about five years and my favourite by far was Wattalk, which for the uh, uninitiated is Wrath of the Lich King. Um, I would say, Martin... I would be inclined to agree with you with Wrath of the Lich King. Um, Burning Crusade, while offering some pretty exciting things, I thought was a little bit disappointing on the story side. Um, we then obviously Mist of Pandaria we don't talk about. Um, uh, Cataclysm was, uh, was exciting, but yeah, story again just doesn't compare to Wrath of the Lich King. Legion I played a little bit of, um, but uh, yeah, again, just it didn't really get me like Wrath of the Lich King did. So. Uh, it would. I'd agree with you. Uh, also, can either of you recommend a good audio book for me to listen to? Presumably something quite light. Oh, he's actually he's still just unpacking stuff. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, readers. But um, he's just unpacking his bag. I wonder what he's got in his bag. He's got. I think he pulled out some kind of baguette. Um, that's a pencil case and a severed head. Okay. Um, oh God, I hope he didn't. Th- I hope he didn't see me see that. Oh God, what are we gonna do? Right, readers, while Simon's not listening, although he will edit this podcast, but still, it'll be hilarious. As many of you as you can, can you email in to spongyelectric at gmail.com saying, I saw you, and then do a head emoji. That's all we got. All right, he's coming back. Here we go. Hey, mate. He's still going. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just having a chat. Just uh, We were just having a chat with the listeners. It's fine while you're away. I have to admit, I assumed you were halfway through the first paragraph of your introduction to what yeah. Warcraft. I was literally going to go and make a meal. Um, that's going to be a lovely editing experience for me, I'm sure. When I when I get round to editing this, uh, are you done with Are you done with the question from? Martin? We've got to recommend a good audio book for him to listen to. I've never listened to an audio book. Oh, for God's sake! Uh, so, <laughs> oh no, 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 no! I have. I've listened to one when I was a kid, and I listened to it loads. And that was Danny Champion of the World by Roald Dahl. Oh, that is good. That used to be my go-to book because it was about me. Because you've listened, you're you, you're something of an expert. If we get sponsored by Audible uh, for some godforsaken reason, uh, you're the person that's going to do all the recommendations. Oh, definitely. Next up, uh, we have an email from Ricky Villarreal. Bill- Villarreal. Oh, sorry, I've got to stop trying to 
impressed pixel girl by pronouncing everything with a v as if it's spanish uh hello simon and dan thank you correct order i apologize ahead of time for the lengthy email but i love 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 listening to the podcast you it's no problem whatsoever i'm going to two tldr this uh i'm not reading it um my question for simon is how do you like operating on a fully Linux device? I'm scared to completely whip my laptop and go uh, full Linux, but I know I'll be grateful in the future. So for those of you that don't know, Linux is a free operating system. You don't have to pay for a license like with Windows or with a Mac. Um, you literally just download it from the internet on like a flash drive, put it into your laptop or whatever, and then you're good to go. Um, it is a little bit intimidating and um, I would definitely recommend if you're going to do it, start with Ubuntu because there's loads of support for it. Um, what are you doing, Dan? Uh, nothing. <laughs> I definitely didn't zone. I definitely didn't zone out there. <laughs> you keep doing it going there. You're talking about Linux sorry, and it's... just an inferior operating system. I don't have any time for it. Oh, here we go. Here we bloody go. Here we go. Let's move into the genius part. Oh yeah, problem here is you're running Linux <laughs> on a Mac. What is, are you're you just doing? A, you're a mess. You're a bit of a bitch. You so, say, you know, sorry. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely a bit intimidating. But once you learn how to use the command line. Um, you also realize how transparent it is. Um, you literally have the power to change anything. And with a little bit of coding, basically, I recommend going full Ubuntu and just trying. You talked about Warcraft for how long this episode? Oh, oh sorry. What? <laughs> sorry, Bilbo. Um, I'm not going to read the bit to do with Dan then. Uh, it, something to do with dogs. Um, I There is a postscript, however, to this email. Now, mm. do you remember last time I asked people to try and find a uh acronym not an acronym what's the word when you rearrange the letters we i forgot it last time as well Oh, a anagram anagram of daniel marvolo riddle uh you can change that to be i'm dody lover dan oh my god how amazing that's brilliant <laughs> but it's like it don't lover is spelled with three l's and two r's so it's a little bit of a little bit of a squeeze um that's, that's but brilliant. i love that so it much it kind of looks like welsh i'm Dodie Clover Dan. Yeah. That's so, brilliant. Thank uh, that you, was Ricky. too good to not read out. Well done, Ricky. You, you've really that's, that's some great work it's there. It's written in the stars. So we've got another one here from Matthew Dawes. Uh, Dear Messrs. Moore and Clark, right order again, he says. Very true. Questionable. Very, very, very true. I must thank you for accepting my language challenge on the latest Wikicast. It was very funny and I looked like a complete pillock laughing on the bus while I was listening to that section of the podcast. I must say the words you failed at most were not the ones I was expecting. Like tyre, for example, where the P is in fact pronounced. So um, Matthew sent us the challenge of um, pronouncing a bunch of French words and it seems that we failed. Now he has, uh, he has actually sent us an attachment. Is this him pronouncing all the words? I'm going to have a listen. I cannot hear anything because my headphones are not plugged into my computer. Bouilloire, pneu, grenouille, serrurerie, écureuil, oeil, quincaillerie. Um, uh, yeah, we were, I think we were close on maybe two of them. That's better than I thought it was yeah, going to be. to be fair. Um, he also has a question for me. Simon, I want you to read these out. <sighs> And I'm gonna get I'm gonna get really nerdy because you're probably gonna pronounce some of them wrong. That's gonna really piss. Can somebody please please send us a question about my favorite Warhammer forty thousand characters? Okay, I have a question for Dan. Pick your favorite. Al- <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Alexstrasza. Alexstrasza, close. Alexstrasza. Deathwing. Yeah. Maligos. Maligos, yeah. Nosdurmo. Nosdormu. <sighs> Or Ysera. Ysera, yeah. Uh, so, so these they, are World of Warcraft characters. They are the five. You know what I could do with another snack? Uh, I'm just they're gonna, the five dragon right, aspects, right, Simon. Right. Come on. Alex Traza represents the red dragonflight. Deathwing the, Deathwing the black. Malagos was the blue dragonflight, uh, which is arcane. Uh, Nosdormu was time. And Ysera is life. Um, green. Uh, the various dragon flights there. Gosh, I don't know. I think Malagos I always really liked because he's, you know, um, like wisdom and the arcane and being a mage. Uh, I God, I'm such a f***ing dork. Anyway, right, I'm going to give Simon the... Uh, go- oh, he's gone. He's just... He's actually just found it. Hey. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm gesticulating violently into the webcam to try and get him back. He's coming. Come on. Come on, boy. Come on, then. There we and go. He's back. Hello. Sorry, uh, my 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 new landlord, my friend, uh, had to get Ooh, friend. Uh, his keys back off friend. me. Oh, friend! Oh, uh, friend! What was your choice, by the way? 
Uh, Malagos. Oh, I don't care. I really don't okay, care. cool. Uh, <laughs> well, this this next one says something really nice about you. It doesn't say anything nice about you. You're a dick. What? Who said that? Emil Sparforce <laughs> says, Dear Mr. Moore and Clark. Well, at least you got the order right. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for your wonderful podcast, which makes my running much easier. Go! Just go now! Sprint! There, Simon, Sprint! You're... Sprint for 10 seconds! Go, 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 go! You're going you're gonna to hate this, but you just listened back and you read that in the wrong order. He actually says Mr. Clark and Moore. You, you read Moore and Clark and said that was the right order. I'm out. Simon's post. Okay, post I'm Simon. Out. He always oh, gone. He's gone. Dan, you read the rest. Okay, right. Here we go. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for your wonderful podcast, which makes my running much easier as it makes me forget about the laborious feelings you get from it. Except today, when you were a little too funny as you made me laugh and then stumble on a route and thereafter ungracefully fly into the air and then fall into the ground in the same manner. I'm just going to. My name is Emil, and I'm from Ups- Uppsala, Sweden. Uppsala is a university town where about a quarter of the population are students. Carl Linnaeus, as you mentioned last episode, researched and even was the headmaster of the uni for a while. Sorry for the spelling, by the way. I blame my Swedish uh, descent for that. My speaking is much comparable to Hans Rosling's. Lol. If you know who he was. Rip, by the way. Anyway, here are some regularly used Swedish sayings. We actually use these for you to absolutely slaughter. Try to speak like Hans Rosling and you might be fine. I don't know. Just just before that, I just got some. I just got a snack here. Uh, I just I just want you to see. Don't you this dare on our on our video. Don't oh, you fucking dare. Oh, oh, I hate you. Oh, oh, stop it! <laughs> Please <laughs> don't. Mm. Oh, oh god! Just tore a lovely hunk of cheese off of this block. Mmm. <laughs> now let's get some ASMR eating effects here. Sorry if you're hungry. <laughs> oh god! Oh. You are literally the worst human being. Mm. Oh, he's so literally, good. and that's a big block of Cathedral City too. Oh no, it's a Tesco Extra Mature. Yeah, oh, okay, don't give it. <laughs> Why would you do it that? It now looks like a geological formation. This is I did the, it because I knew it would wind you up. This is because the world of Warhammer. <laughs> I don't questions, the isn't consequences. It? This is because people yep. are more interested in my nerdy things than your Warhammer. Please, people, please send me some Warhammer. Please, 40, for Simon's questions. sake, send him something. I think he's, he's he's having a bit of a breakdown. Right, so Swedish. Okay, you can start. No, I started last time. Okay. I've also eaten cheese. I want you to do the language challenge first this time. Okay. Oh, hang on. Before we do this, before we do this, what's what Swedish music should I put underneath this? Is ABBA Swedish? Jag fick en tupp i halsen. This is a bit racist, isn't it, really? That might, that might not be okay. <laughs> Are you the fucking Swedish chef from the Muppets? Brookty brookty brook. Smakken our sombak and the lad. Welcome to the Swedish chef city. Han gled in pa en rakmaka. Fins det charterum. Fins det charterum. I didn't intend for the meter to go quite that way, but. This is like when we play Magicka. It's literally just just like that. That's so, amazing. Say what? Um, I I will I will tackle this now. So you've heard flawless, presumably Swedish. If I tackle a phrase, would you like to give me a translation after yeah. I say it? Okay, sure. Okay, so cue the music again. Jag fick en tupp i halsen. I got a cock in my throat. Rooster, unfortunately. I love that this sounds like a like a language learning tape. Mm. <laughs> Learn Swedish with Simon and Dan. Smaken är som baken de lad. The taste is like the ass. Split. What does that even mean? What does that mean in English? What, that, what, do you, what does it mean? What are the rules? Han gled in pa an rökmaka. He slid in on a shrimp sandwich. Are these you must be shitting us, Emil. These are not actual phrases. Emil, Did you see him? Or oh, he, he slid in on a shrimp sandwich. <laughs> what does that mean? He was drunk? And then lastly, I, I really, <laughs> I actually quite like this phrase um, in English. Yeah. Fins det hjatterum, fins det hjatterum. If there's room for the heart, there's room for the ass. Except there's an umlaut on the four, so if there's room for the heart, there's room for the ass. <laughs> <laughs> it goes quite Germanic for some reason. Um, that was fun. That was Please excellent. do let us know. 
Emil, if uh, if we got that right, um, we do actually have Swedish Ed in our in our choir. We should have, we should. Oh Swed. God, can you imagine him as a guest? Swedwood. Jesus Christ, him at Freshers Fair was terrifying enough. Jesus, yeah, good solid effort there. We've got one, a brief one from Sarah Cook. She says, love your podcast. Quick question I've just thought of while listening to episode 10. Which Hogwarts houses would you both be in and where would you sort each other? Not sure if you've discussed this before. Apologies if you have. Sincerely, Sarah, Cl- Sarah Cook, a Ravenclaw. I've, I've, I've always seen myself as a Gryffindor. I've done all the quizzes. I'm always a Gryffindor. I'm a Gryffindor. Same, actually. Um, I, I was expecting to be a Ravenclaw, but... Um... Uh, yeah, apparently, apparently, I was ninety-one percent Gryffindor on uh, on Pottermore. I was really, really Gryffindor. What was funny was uh, when I went to Oxford, I met up with um, and now I'm pro- arguably our most famous listener, Sally LePage, because mm. uh, she listened to all the podcasts and just sent me a message. It was one sentence: "Your podcast is funny." Full stop. Yeah, <laughs> so I sent one back like, "Thank you." Full stop. Um, <laughs> we were talking approval. about this, and um, she we, we we were talking about Hogwarts houses, and she put it a Twitter. A poll out and hang um, on no 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 what did she put up <laughs> come on one day you've got to learn on, sorry i'm just i'm just gonna take another bite of cough with the cheese don't be a dick <laughs> anyway so sally did a poll sally did a poll and um her, her followers thought she was more hufflepuff than slytherin or ravenclaw top, i think they i, I remember bands. right they sorted her into gryffindor she is one of the most Slytherin people I've ever met. <laughs> Sally, you're listening to this. You are so Slytherin. You agreed with me. Mm. And yeah, people thought you belonged in the same house as noble people like Cedric Diggory and... Who else do we know from Hufflepuff? Um... Helga Hufflepuff mm. and... Oh, we're missing a really obvious one. Newt Scamander. Newt Scamander. Uh, Sally, you are not Newt Scamander. Come on. You're far too cold and calculating. You're um, Pansy Parkinson, who had a oh face God, like a face pug. face like a pug. Is her description? Okay, now because of that, we actually now have to plug Sally's channel because we were mean about her. Sally is our friend. He has a YouTube channel, Sally LePage. Uh, Shed Sally science. Sally LePage. Sally LePage. Sally LePage. Sally La Plage, her, her beach form. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, you should check her out because we were just mean about her and I feel bad. And she listens to the podcast. Sorry, Sally. But you're I definitely. I was just trying to think of the most infamous Slytherin Salazar Slytherin or perhaps Lord Voldemort. No, no. It would be something like Marcus Flint. <laughs> no, stop. Save. So <laughs> Who sake. else do we have? You've already given her a few body blows. That's just every people listening. You should check out Sally's channel. Vincent Crab, <laughs> Gregory Goyle. Check out Sally's channel. Let's move on. We're both Gryffindors. Sally's a, Sally's a Slytherin. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Sarah, you have a you've been you've been joined by another another first time writer, I believe, Eleanor Taylor. Uh, Dear Messrs. Moore and Clark, again, good order. Hi, I'm a long time reader of the podcast and I'm really enjoying it so far. Since you're both Harry Potter fans, I have some Potterverse related questions for for the two of you. Oh God, did you, are you sending all these emails in this week? Yeah. Have you just just, set up like five different accounts? I have, yeah. What house would you be in? Established. Which role would you have on a Quidditch team? Now that's a good question. And if you were Animagus, uh, what would you be? Thanks for reading this, and I look forward to the future episodes, Eleanor. P.S. Dogs over cats any day. Simon, uh, which role would you be on a Quidditch team? Tosser? I mean, beater? <laughs> I mean, there's no question that you would be a seeker, mm. because you resemble a broom, and perhaps the opposition might just mistake you for two brooms I mean, that have clumped that's together. a compliment. I resemble the snitch. <laughs> Can somebody please, please... Photoshop a set of wings on Dan's head so that his head is the ball of the snitch. Can you make my head slightly gold? Uh, on his forehead is tattooed. I open at the close. Uh, what would I be? I would be... I honestly don't know. I think maybe a beater, actually. Mm. Yeah, I, I could th- see you as a beater. I, the... I think you'd make, quite, you'd make quite a good keeper. I was hesitating, actually. I Because mean, uh, I th- basically, I, I'm quite triangular. I have quite broad shoulders. Like I'm quite chunky. So I feel like that's beta build. Whereas I think for the keeper, you probably want to... You, I suppose I'm quite tall. You, I was going to say, you want someone really tall and spindly like my mate John. Mm. He'd be a good keeper. Mm. If you could find a broom that's big enough to fly him. And if you were um, an animator, He's like six foot five. That's not just me being mean about his weight. 
Oh, and if we were an Animagus, um, I'd be. A, I, I'd. I'd like to think I would be. I was going to say a panther, but that's not terribly useful. I want to be a, a cat, panther. But, fuck off. But I want to be a cool cat. <laughs> you would not be a panther. What, what do you think I would be? I don't know, but not a fucking panther, mate. <laughs> um, you'd probably be... What's constantly stressed out and always on the brink of like nervous collapse and swearing? Chihuahua. Like one, of those sh- one of those horrible little shaved chihuahuas. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I would be a golden eagle. No, I think I'd be some kind of bird, you'd, probably like a robin. You'd be. I was going to say, you'd be a robin or its flightless cousin, the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be like a vole or something. I'd be a shrew, a shrewd shrew. <laughs> I can imagine you as a shrew and you're just there eating your body weight every like five minutes. Again, coming back to the, the shrew facts, you did this in like the first episode. Can you remember? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, you prefer to be solitary unless you're mating. This is this is very true. True, true stories. I don't. I don't know. Genuinely, I don't know what animagus I would be. Uh, if you have any suggestions, based, yeah, based on you, what, videos, and what podcasts, do you think we would be? What would you cast us as? Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. And maybe if if we get to, uh, oh, what's a good thing to, to if if we get a hundred thousand downloads in a week of this podcast, we will act out a sketch. <laughs> We will do a sketch where we are wizards and we see danger and we become our anime guy. Oh my god, that would be deal, fun. deal. Hundred thousand downloads in a week. We've got to get to that, and then we'll do a sketch. That's yeah. a, that's a pinky promise. That's a pinky promise. One last quick one before we turn Hell, to the. Wait, uh... You've you've led on like the past three emails. Okay, go for your life. This has been this has been the Dan show this week. <laughs> we got we got the fucking Harry Potter, the world of Warcraft. Talking it's about just, your Apple just job. Because I'm you clearly the coolest Apple. member of the Wikicast. Slash the latest. Being the coolest member out of two is not much of an accomplishment. I don't know, I'll take also, it. Also, I like that that was my complaint, not just trying to argue that I was the coolest <laughs> Yeah, member. you f***ed that one. Anyway, we have one very quick email from John Selway, who has sent us uh, a banner. He has designed a banner for us. And I really like it. Yeah, I really like it. Uh, because the Sponge and Electric banner on the YouTube channel is quite old now, actually, and it doesn't reference the the podcast. Mm. Uh, it's um, it's like a Duolingo style mm. or Ker- uh, Kurzgesagt type. Um, I'm not even sure what you call that style. Um, hopefully, by the time you listen to this, we would have changed the banner to this. So I've got... Uh, John, thank you so much. I really like this design. It does look absolutely brilliant. Could you please put a lightning bolt, however, on Dan's forehead? And without further ado, it's time for everyone's favourite part of the show. It's our fan fiction. Uh, we've got a regular writer, Joshua Baker. Um, this time he's emailed us with the with the chapter four instalment in the series of The Case of the Deleted Pixels. I'm going to hand over to our narrator extraordinaire, the one, the only Simon Clark. Simon. Well, but, but I was just going to say, before we do, shall we recap for people that might be new to the series? Okay, go away, recap. So this is part four. So this is in a <laughs> fictional version of Exeter where it seems to be half sci-fi and half medieval, if I remember correctly. And I am some kind of detective with a badge that says PhD student and mm-hmm. apparently can go up to the police and just be like, what's going on here then? PhD student. Um, and... Uh, Dan, uh, we, oh, this is the series where I will do accurate impressions of everybody. So naturally, Dan sounds like a uh, 19th century urchin. Sorry, accurate London. citation needed, but yeah, go on. And I sound like David Attenborough. Uh, and uh, interestingly, in this one, it's this kicked off the the Horus heresy of this of this series was um, the murder of Pixel Girl because Pixel Girl and Liv are two different people. And I was dating, I am dating Liv, and you were thinking of dating Pixel Girl. Stop licking the microphone; you don't know where it's been. Uh, and in the last instalment, Dan was um, strapped. Uh, almost like in a, a, a sort of villain of the week mm. type style. You were strapped to the roof of the ceiling. It was rain coming down. The Allegri's Miserere was coming out. And um, I, I was nowhere to be seen. And our bastard friend Sam has has been the villain of this piece. So, and so he's scary. Kidnapped you. So scary. Right. I've deleted. I've so, closed. I'm not deleted. I've closed all my email and stuff. So I can't. I don't see what's coming. I'm ready. I'm going to sit back now. See, this is me sitting back. I'm slightly further away. The music's going to kick in, and I'd like to invite you to enjoy The Case of the Deleted Pixels, Chapter 4. Simon sat in a large armchair, hands folded in contemplation. He pondered the events of the last day, and how the various circumstances of Pixel Girl's death could be related. 
Dan had yet to return from his interview with one of the witnesses. The body had a large gash on the upper part of her head, as if a large object had fallen on her, Simon thought. So whoever did the deed must have been able to vault a heavy object to a reasonable height. But who could have such high pitch? Simon stood quickly, all but shouting, Of course! Sorry, I could have been into that then. <clears throat> it could only be, but no, I, I have to hurry. He checked the clock. It was late, far too late for Dan's previous engagement. Simon frowned and dashed out the door. Dan sat, perched on the edge of the chapel. Oh, perched? What? If you escaped your bondage? You were, you were really, you were double knotted before. Dan sat, perched on the edge of the chapel roof. Sam standing over him with a thin grin played out along his face. I've got to remember his voice. Uh, just, uh, <clears throat> resetting. Okay. Such a shame, really. Would have thought you two would have put up a fight. Oh well, I can hear the final verse of the choir's hymn approaching. Minor point. Allegri's Miserere is not a hymn. Yeah, come on, mate. It, come on, it's Josh. A motet. Buddy. Get your Anglican terminology right God sake, can't get the writing stuff we love you Josh sorry Dan struggled to free himself but got nowhere as he tugged at his bindings he had a faint buzzing noise from below him Dan growled at his fellow tenor what are you going to sound like when you growl in this voice I don't know you <laughs> um, tell me mate <laughs> well it's going to sound like you so you should know whatever happened <laughs> oh okay no no it didn't go to plan did it Try again. We Whatever happens to me, you leave Simon alone. Or I swear I'll... You'll what? Sam replied. You won't be doing anything for very much longer. Speaking of, there's my cue. Sam hefted a small hatchet and swung it at the cords. The, oh my god. They snapped and Dan tumbled forward off the roof of the <gasps> chapel, screaming in horror. No! <laughs> that was him, not me. You couldn't tell, of course, because it's so accurate. Sam grimaced and was about to leave when he heard a much louder buzzing coming from beneath the lip of the roof. What? Is that a Suddenly, swarm of bees, Podrick? Is it bees? Please stop eating bees, Podrick! <laughs> Suddenly, Dan rose, as if levitated by some hidden force, suspended dozens of feet above the chapel grounds. There appeared to be a small platform beneath the lad, who stood with his arms crossed and a grim look of determination on his face. What? But how? Sam asked. Ahem. A voice spoke up from behind him. Sam turned and saw the one and the only Simon Clark step out of the shadows. <laughs> fanfare, please. Oh, by the way, I said the microphone. Cut the fanfare. <laughs> the controls to the Icarus 3.0 in his hand. Oh, it's back. It's, it's back. back! The Icarus! <laughs> Simon waved at Dan, who waved in turn, then pointed to Sam. You were behind this whole thing. Aside from Dan, you were the only one who could hold such a high pitch as to do the deed. You wanted Dan out of the way so you could take the lead as sole tenor one. Sam stood there, shocked, then burst out laughing. You think you're so clever that well, he missed one little piece of the puzzle. He then nodded in the direction just behind Simon, and before the lad could turn around, he was bashed in the head from behind, <gasps> dropping the controls. No. As he lost consciousness, he could just make out Dan's small figure falling into the abyss. <gasps> to be concluded. Dun dun dun. Oh my goodness. God. You know, I was disappointed for a while in this series because there wasn't enough sex. But my goodness, I I am so along for this ride. This is amazing, Joshua. We've got a villain seriously. of the week. I turn up like Batman. You're just, also I love this reveal. Like he's like, what? Yeah. And looks over the parapet, and you're just stood there with your arms. With your arms. Also, your support. You're, you're you're what? You're hanging on to Icarus, or you're you're. Because Icarus has got blades on top of it. Mm. It's, oh, it's like there's a platform on top of Icarus. Yeah, yeah. And basically, like you know the thing that the green goblin flew on in um in, 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 in spider-man that's basically yeah you're, you're 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 on this little shuttle thing and i and i turn up and then i'm clobbered from behind so somebody else is in on this who could it be right so the person 
who who I like how we're actually trying to work this out. The person who hit Pixel God over the top of the head mm. was able to vault a heavy object to a reasonable height. So th- somebody strong, right? Or maybe tall. I wonder if it's Hugo. Maybe. Oh, could be Hugo. That, that'd be so Hugo. What if it, it could be the Dark Horse? It could be Corin. It could be Corin. We're, we're just blindly pointing fingers at our friends at this point. Oh, we can't trust anybody, Dan. I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm scared. Well, uh, good grief. Josh, you've, you've outdone yourself yet again. And if you would like to hear what happens next, you're going to have to return next week. Or possibly in two weeks if we keep up with the rated podcast that we're doing. And find out in the case of the Deleted Pixels, Chapter 5. But for now, Daniel, what have we learned today? Well, we started, Simon, with Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist, the old comic West adventure computer game. Great alliteration. I haven't commented on that yet, but that is a really solid title. Um, Released in 1993. We then delved into the history, uh, for some reason, of uh, the Sierra (laughs) uh, Company. Um, We we spoke about World of Warcraft for far too long. It was glorious. We gave you an update on our weeks. Yes, we did. Now that... Simon's Simon's left the house and I'm working at Apple and it's all terribly exciting. Um, but we were talking about, more generally, we were talking about um, what games we grew up with. Mm-hmm. And if people would like us to play Freddy Fingered Phineas Farb's Fartbox, whatever it was called. Freddy Farkas Frontier um, Pharmacist, yeah. Basically what I just said. Uh, if people would like us to play that, then email us at spongyelectric at gmail.com and mm-hmm. let us know because that, that might be a project. After that, uh, did we go straight onto Correspondence Corner after that? I think did we you, did. We had I, quite a I bit of correspondence. I blanked out after you talked about WoW for ages. I think we did go onto Correspondence we, yeah, well, That's why we would, well, Then we, we had some follow-up questions about World of Warcraft and Correspondence Corner. Uh, we did some more butchering of pronunciation. Um, oh yes, and uh, you, we, you must email us with what you think our anime guy would be. Yes, because we, we seem to be undecided. I think Dan is a shrew, personally, but you know, I think you I'm tell a us. Robin. A Robin. And speaking of Robin, I turned up as Batman in this week's fan fiction, mm-hmm. and I cannot wait. Josh, there's no pressure or anything, but I cannot wait for you to write the next chapter. We've got to know. Awesome. That's all for this week's episode. Sorry, I that was so to top gear. <laughs> That's all for this week's episode. <laughs> and on that bem- bomb, oh god, I can't even do it. <laughs> and on that bem shell, that's <laughs> all for this week's. Oh, it's like, it's like... <laughs> and on that bem shell. That's all for this week's episode. Oh, Don't forget to subscribe to us on your podcasting service of choice. You can like us on Facebook. And if you'd like to see our faces, check out our YouTube channel, Spongy and Electric. <laughs> Wow, just just wow. Really, really great. No, we're not talking about wow anymore. Please, please. Anime Guy, World of Warcraft, facts and other thoughts on the show can be spent oh, can be spent to us at <laughs> Spongeon Electric at Zoom. <laughs> You've got to do it in a, in a Scandinavian accent too now. God, I'm such a twat. Yep. Twat. Um, what? My twat alarm's, twat alarm's going off. Twat. Twat. <laughs> Let me turn it off. Sorry, where's twat? <laughs> right. Anime guy, World of Warcraft facts and other thoughts on the show can be sent to us at spongyelectric at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Join us again for another tumble down the wiki rabbit hole. And we'll, we'll see, see you next, next time. time. Sick. We are not talking about WoW on this podcast for at least five episodes, okay? (laughs) 